Welcome to episode 244 of Clarity Compressed. Today, we're gonna to talk about business brand versus personal brand with a little help from our friends at Macy's. Let <laughs> the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So I've been seeing and hearing a lot of conversations lately about what you really need to do between, to build a personal brand and how people who have personal brands have companies that are exponentially more successful. Now, I don't buy into that one-to-one -one, uh, translation because there are certain exceptions that just break the whole thing down. However, I will say that building brand and using who you are as a person and what your passions are and what the business trajectory, how it fits into all that can be extremely effective. And I think important for someone who has like a creator's mindset, even as they approach business. I'm gonna use a couple of things to case in point this today. First, I can say from personal experience, I get a lot of fulfillment out of building what they say is personal brand. And I don't even like to think of it that way anymore because I'm intentionally building a brand seems to me like let me break that down. Yes, I am building intentionally a, per, a personal brand. However, I do it in a way that just feels right to me. Sure, sometimes I try to use best practices to raise awareness and grow, but the intention for me isn't so that I can build my business bigger or get more opportunity. However, on the flip side of it, that is actually what happens and not just in areas where it like makes sales go up, but in areas where it, like any good brand does, it attracts the right people into your ecosystem. So I have this Clarity Compressed podcast that you're listening to right now. And that is really my moment out of every week where I get to talk about kind of what's going on under the hood in my mind, in my heart, what I'm thinking about, what my approach is to things. And over the years, that has shifted and pivoted. In the beginning, it was very much dedicated to um, the automotive industry. And then it shifted into a real big trajectory of just talking about marketing and brand and family life and bridging the things together. Um, I had a lot of guests over the history of this podcast episode. Everybody, like, I've had multiple New York Times bestsellers, owners of multi-billion dollar businesses, um, Gary Vaynerchuk, as you know, and all of these interviews and things have kind of been a culmination of just my running around the country trying to meet people that I want to meet, trying to learn from people that I want to learn from, and uh, get close to the other people that I feel like are like-minded. So today I said we're going to have a little help from our friends at Macy's. Nothing says successful personal brand like Macy's, a legacy retailer who, you know, in a lot of instances has had to close stores and shift throughout this whole retail apocalypse. But I'm going to open this box, show you what's inside. See, it's still all sealed up. And then we're going to talk about why personal brand and business brand come together. So if you're watching, you're going to get to see me. If you're not watching it, then you don't get to see what's happening. I'll have to explain it to you. But that is the sound authentically of the box opening. Let's see what this unboxing is. Let's do a little unboxing. So I open the Macy's box. And the first thing I see is an advertisement from HelloFresh for a 50% off coupon, right? So they're doing a little bit like, hey, we have customers that are buying our stuff. Let's try to sell ad placement inside our packaging, which I think just as a little note, really cheapens the brand experience of doing business with Macy's. This is the first package I've ever bought from Macy's online. And I'll show you why I bought this package in a second. You'll understand why I did. But automatically, I feel like it's some kind of like mail order garbage, which I don't think is the brand that Macy's wants to have. So get this out of the box. Here you go. Here's what I bought from Macy's. It is a Common Sense Cow collectible, which is one of the V-Friends um, V Friends characters that has now branched from an entrepreneur. This I'll tell you the story if you don't know about it. So Gary Vaynerchuk started his family wine business, immigrated into this country when he was very, very young, joined the family uh, liquor business, turned it into a wine store, started leveraging YouTube, turned it from a $3 million to a $60 million company, then was an early investor in a lot of tech startups, um, started an agency called VaynerMedia, which is now on its track to be one of the biggest agencies in the world. In the meantime, he built a wine company where he sold direct consumer wine, built a YouTube empire, a social media empire, um, is a very highly paid keynote speaker, um, understands the world of NFTs, early adopter, started an NFT project called VFriends, which was basically based around all the characteristics that he feels are important in business. So um, he's kind of uh, dedicated to building what he calls a honey empire, saying, I'm going to show people that you can uh, be part of the hustle, build a really big, successful business and be nice to other people on the way up and you don't have to be cutthroat. V Friends 
are the retail character characterization of those principles. So common sense cow. And so he started as an NFT project, which as you know, is kind of like a fad that kind of goes up and down, but NFTs that have community around them have staying power. And community is always built about brand. It's built around the premise that people like us do things like this. And when you get together with that community, what it does is elicit this feeling of belonging and purpose in you, which makes you move closer and get sticky to the brand. He's found a way to not only build that around these animals, which are based on these you know, draw hand drawings that he did for the first round of NFTs and now has branched out into the retailization of that intellectual property by taking his personal brand and putting it together to the point where now I have a kid's toy in my hand. And if you know Gary Vee, you know, sometimes he just like curses like a sailor. So it's funny that he would be the one, you know, putting out kid's toys at the same time. I think the authenticity of what is his personal brand has now spanned into what his business also is and they're all moving in the same direction. All the lanes are going in the same direction, which is why it works. Here, I'll show you some other stuff. Here you go. You ever play Uno? V Friends Uno, right? Another collaboration that he did with Mattel to release V Friends Uno. There's a card game, right? They're like Kind of like Pokemon that I'm holding up right now. Uh, a very nice retail acrylic box. Number two, be the bigger person. Be the bigger person. This is another principle that he tries to evoke in his business and personal brand here's another one we have the genuine giraffe i have the gratitude gorilla some people look at that and see kids toys i look at it and i see a personal brand and a business brand coming together look i don't care if you want to build a personal brand to build a business right and that is your trajectory building a brand is about marketing yourself is about building a reputation because brand and reputation are really the same thing your personal brand and a personal reputation are the same thing. You just are act able to now these days proactively PR yourself. Take your best things and put them out front. And sometimes I think your best things are your most authentic things, which are often your most vulnerable things because people want to do business with people they like and people they can trust. And when you're willing to be vulnerable, something happens in the human psyche where you tend to trust that person a little bit more because they're honest. So if you're building a brand to build a business, be upfront with that. Say, here's the content I put out. I want you to do business with me. I want to do that by serving you. Never ask, 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 right? Give, give, give when you're talking about building any personal brand. And look, your personal brand might just be the creative expression, right? Where you just want to talk about the things that make you uniquely you. And I highly encourage that because whether that's family or cars or dogs or sewing or knitting or amateur weather reporting, I don't care what it is. Make that a part of your mix because you never know what is going to hit. You never know what people are going to connect with. And don't think of it in terms of thousands of followers. Think of it in terms in one of one, especially if you're in B2B, because if you're in B2B, you already know, like I do, you don't need a thousand people. You just need the one right person to connect with you. And they might connect with you because you're into amateur weather reporting. That might be the CEO of the company who you want to do business with. And he might move toward you, skip over everybody else because of the amateur weather reporting. You got to know your stuff in the end. You have to be a good deliverer. So just wanted to share some thoughts like that. I thought it was real apt that we got to open some packages here on the podcast this week and talk about a topic that I'm seeing a lot around, especially on LinkedIn. So those are some thoughts. That's what I've done, right? That is how I roll is what I do. So it's probably not right for you. Might be, but whatever you do, make sure it is authentic and your intentions are clear. Don't be divisive about it. Don't be deceitful about it. Don't say, well, I really want to be your friend when really I just want your money, right? I think that that breaks down eventually and it doesn't work. So thank you for spending some time with me. I hope that gave you a little bit of perspective this week. I want to see all those personal brands. Make sure you tag me, mention me. I'd love to see what you're doing. Love to see what you're building. And I will see you next week. We can